9. Open your box page 38. Recognizing and misplaced the modifier. All right, in today's session, you are speaking about the misplaced modifier. Misplaced modifier. But first, we need to start by asking what is the meaning of a modifier and what do we mean by a misplaced modifier? So, what is the meaning of a modifier, period 9? If I told you what is the meaning of a misplaced modifier, so we need to identify a modifier. And what do we mean by it? Still with me, grade nine? Yes, with you. Yes. Yeah. So when I say a modifier, modifier. Thank you very much. A modifier means something that modifies other thing. Simple, right? We have something modifies another thing. That's why we call it a modifier, right? So, in the sentence, perhaps we have a clause or a phrase or even one word or a couple of words that can modify other things. If you are modifying a noun, if you are modifying a noun, then what will you have? Give me a sentence contains a phrase or a clause modifies a noun. So, an adjective? Yeah, it will become an adjective, bravo. Give me an example, please. The golden sword. The golden sword. Nice. So in this case, what do you have? The modifier to sword is golden. So I have here golden modifies the sword problem. Shall we always have uh, an adjective to modify an noun? No. Sometimes you have a phrase or a clause that modifies a noun. Like for example, when I say Ali, who is a doctor, is my friend. Ali, who is a doctor, is my friend. In this case, this clause in front of me here, who is a doctor? Who is a doctor? Modifies whom? This clause, who is a doctor? Modifies what? Ali. Modifies Ali. Consequently, this whole clause in front of you, that's of course a subordinate one. This subordinate clause here in front of you acts as an adjective, like golden sword. So golden modifies the sword. But this whole clause, who is a doctor, modifies Ali. Consequently, this whole clause acts like an adjective. So I can have just one word acts like an adjective, or a whole clause or a phrase that acts like an adjective. So, can I just remove golden from here and put it here? The sword is stored in golden. No. Can I do that? It's misplaced. Yeah, that's the meaning of a misplaced. So, a misplaced means when you have the word that modifies or identifies the noun, the verb, the adjective, or the adverb according to course to what is it, whether it's an adjective or even an adverb. When you have it away from the noun, consequently, it's going to be 
misplaced. Misplaced. Ali is my friend who is a doctor. That's misplaced. So you must bring the clause, the phrase, the word that modifies another thing in the sentence, the modifier, just directly next to the noun it refers to. Directly next to the noun it refers to. Otherwise, the sentence is going to seem like old or strange. And we don't want our sentence to be like that. Does the chat work? Can someone type anything in the chat? Whose last session it didn't work? Sorry? Can you type anything in the chat? For me, I don't have chat. Oh. Uh, I mean, some wrote um, Yeah. You wrote, but unfortunately, it doesn't appear strange. Yeah, that's why I'm telling you that team is lagging today. All right, so thanks, God, you have a mind. So once again, recognizing misplaced modifiers. So modifiers means when you have something in the sentence, modifies another thing. So when it's misplaced, meaning that it is not directly next to the word it modifies. So a misplaced modifier is placed too far from the word or words it modifies. Okay, so if I removed from example golden, like when removing golden from here, and putting it big. In this case, that's a misplaced. Away from the word it modifies. Of course, we don't want this. So a misplaced modifier is placed too far from the word or words it modifies. In this case, we have the misplaced modifier. So it appears to modify the wrong words. And by modifying the wrong words, sometimes the sentence is going to seem old or strange. Correct misplaced modifier by just moving it closer to the word or words it modifies. For example, when I say a car drove by our house honking its horn. So the modifier here is honking its horn. But the question here, who is honking its horn? The car. The car. But in this case, in this example, the next noun is the house. So was the house honking the horn? Of course, that's wrong. That's why we need to bring it just directly next to the word it modifies. A car honking its horn drove by our house. So while using the modifiers in the wrong place, sometimes the sentence will seem old or strange. In practice A, identifying the misplaced modifier, read each sentence and underline the misplaced modifier and circle the modified word. Pretty easy. See what is the modifier in the sentence and which word it modifies. So you start by read. Right. Numero one. I do the first one. Yep. The librarian gave a book to Dennis with a torn cover. I'm guessing with a torn cover refers to the book. So with a torn cover should be directly after the book. Nice. Bravo, bravo, bravo. So here we have the proposition phrase, propositional phrase with a torn cover. Of course, with a torn cover here refers to the book. Not to Dennis. Dennis doesn't have a cup. So the librarian. Supposedly we should say that the librarian gave a book with a torn cover to Dennis. Or a book with a torn cover was given to Dennis by the librarian. But after all, we must bring with a torn cover directly after the book. Nice. And uh, number two. We have uh, Monsieur Salim. Yes, teacher. Yeah, a group of girls sat in uh, the corner eating lunch. 
I, I'm trying to understand it. Like, how do you mean, like, misplaced monotone? Well, simply, modifiers, they are not just words. They can be words, they can be propositional phrases, they can be phrases, they can be clauses, they can be just anything in the sentence that modifies another word. For example, in this sentence, a group of girls sat in the corner eating lunch. So we have here what? A group of girls eating lunch sat in the corner. Exactly. So eating lunch here is called a participle close. Participle close. Supposedly you have already studied that. So participle close here, eating lunch. They modify what? They modify the girl. Yeah. So they ate lunch, but they sat in the corner. Exactly. So we can just say that a group of girls eating lunch sat in the corner. So underline the participle close, eating lunch, and circle the girls. So that's the misplaced modifier. Because if I didn't remove it, then in this sentence it means that the corner was eating lunch. And of course that's wrong. So, simply, all of these sentences, the 10 sentences, are wrong because they contain a misplaced modifier. Once again, the modifier can be a word, can be a clause, can be a phrase, whatever phrase, okay? Even can be a subordinate clause, usually comes as a subordinate clause, or a propositional phrase, or a participle clause, whether in present or past, okay? And it modifies something in the sentence. If it modifies the noun, then it acts like an adjective. So here, eating lunch modifies the girl. With a torn cover, modifies the book. Both of them acts like an adjective. Acts, they are not adjective. With a torn cover, it's called a propositional phrase. Yet, it acts like an adjective because it modifies the book. Eating lunch is called a participle phrase. Yet, it acts like an adjective because it modifies the girls. Okay? So, all what we are dealing with is just to find the modifier in the sentence and put it directly next to the word that modifies. That's our whole session. Okay, Salim? Yeah, I understand. Thank you. Yeah. All right. And number three, Mr. Big Brain. Yes. So we we un, we circle like the modified word. Yeah, circle book, circle girls, and underline with a torn cover and earring lunch, because simply. This is a sentence now, and this sentence contains a misplaced modifier. Right? And practice A, all we need to do is just to modify the misplaced modifier. Because in practice B, we will correct the sentence like this. So supposedly the sentence shall be the librarian gave a book with a torn cover to business. So that's the correct sentence. Mark is over station. That's a lot, man. I swear to God, that's a lot. All right, guys, so once again, the sentence here is misarranged. Misarranged. Why it's misarranged? Because I have a modifier in the sentence that is not put in its correct place. That's why the sentence is incorrect. So you cannot type a sentence like that. It's incorrect. So what we need to do is just to, right now in practice, identify the error in the sentence. Because in practice B, we will rearrange the sentence. All right? 
the following week, grade nine. Yes. Hope so. Yeah. So yet. I heard that high winds are expected on the weather channel. Uh, maybe winds and uh, weather channel. I mean, yes. So uh, I don't know. Uh, for example, I have a sentence like that, and I don't know what's wrong. So simply, I heard that high winds are expected on the weather channel. Uh, well, if I translated it into Arabic, that's correct, Mr. Rahman. Yeah, yeah we hear that when they expected on the other channel, right? But here, what is the phrase you have? Phrase like a propositional phrase, a participle flows. Uh, what is the phrase and the sentence here? Do you have a propositional phrase and the sentence? I don't know. What is the meaning of a propositional phrase? I don't know, something at the end of a sentence, that's what I know. Propositional phrase. A phrase that starts with a proposition. Propositional phrase. A phrase that starts with a proposition. Proposition like in, on, at, after, behind, all of these propositions. Okay? Do you have one in the sentence? Uh, I think it's uh, you underline um, on the weather channel and it refers to herd. Exactly. So we have here on the weather channel. So in this place right now, what does on the uh, weather channel identify? It identifies the prepositional phrase. In this decision right now, what does it mean? It means here in the sentence that there are high winds expected on the weather channel, meaning that on the weather channel in the place, which is the weather channel, there are high winds. And of course, that's untrue because the weather channel is a channel. So how can you have winds inside the channel? So it's impossible. So on the weather channel here, modifies what? Modifying the hearing process. I heard, you heard where on the weather channel that high winds are expected. So the high winds, they are not on the weather channel. They are in the city. And I heard that on the weather channel. Calling me, Ed? Yes. Holy crap. I agree. No, I have two substitution sessions today. Whoa. Come on, guys. Come on. Give me a right. break. All week long. Okay. Yeah, so once you get a raise. Yeah, I'll ask about that. <laughs> I heard that the high winds are expected on the weather channel. Of course, in this case, you are dealing with what? Uh, here. The hearing process, you heard where I heard on the weather channel. So I must bring that propositional phrase, which acts here as what? This propositional phrase acts like what? Adjective or adverb? Sorry? This propositional phrase on the weather channel acts like as, uh, an adjective or as an adverb? An adjective. Bravo. A, a phrase. Bravo. Bravo. Very, very, very good. Acts like what? A phrase and adjective. As what? Adjective. I mean adverb. Heard, it's yes. Like so. what? An adjective means no, it's an a noun. An adjective. The channel is a noun, right? So, yeah, yeah it's an adjective. We find a noun that's directly acts like an adjective. On the other hand, once you have a clause or a phrase modifying a verb, adjective, or another adverb, then directly it acts like an adverb. So when you have a clause or you have a phrase that modifies the noun, then it acts like an adjective. If that clause or phrase modifies a verb, an adjective, or another adverb, then directly that's an adverb, modifies an adverb, or acts like an adverb. 
Okay. All right. Monsieur Ibrahim, do you have Ibrahim? Oh, we don't have it. Hello, Ibrahim. How are you doing? I didn't hear you all the. Uh, and I'm going to have a play. Ah, we. My brother said there is Anya on the stove that our mother made. Yep. What's the modifier in that sentence? Once again, a modifier can be a phrase or a clause. <clears throat> okay, wait one second. Can I give you a hint? On the stove? Can I give you a hint? Yes. Okay, I'll give you a hint. All right. Try to make the sentence a simple one and ellipse everything else. Oh, yeah, okay. My brother What's says it. Close here. The main clause, my brother said the lasagna. That's it. That's the simple sentence. My brother said the lasagna. Okay, so yes. right now you have still propositional phrase on the stove. And you have a support knee clothes that our mother made. So, which one describes the other one? Which one here modifies something else in the sentence? So, you have the propositional phrase on the stove, and you have uh, the support knee clothes that our mother made. That our mother made modifies that represents the or modifies the lasagna. The lasagna. So it doesn't modify the stove. And it's, a sen and it's a place right now in the sentence that our mother made modifies the stove. Your mother didn't make the stove. She made the lasagna. Yeah. So here, the sentence should be our brother or my brother said the lasagna, comma, that, or without the comma, sorry that our mother made on the stove. Mm -hmm. So the sentence should be, my brother said the, la the lasagna that our mother made on the stove. Okay? Okay. Now F, number five. Yes, teacher. The, pingle, the, pingle. the cat, the cat, and owl. Man, please let me in. Who's this? This must be Yusuf. Yeah, this, this has to be Yusuf. Yes, yeah. this is Yusuf. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. What's going on? Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Why are you super late? That's number one. Number two, where is your account? Microsoft Teams has been giving me issues all day. Log out and log in from teams itself that's the thing i logged out but i can't log back in <laughs> you forgot your password no it won't let me it won't load uh -huh, I just say initializing and stay on that page for three years oh my god yeah teams is super lucky today okay i'll just keep you with us okay, okay. <laughs> so we are dealing with uh, page 38 recognizing the misplaced modifier a modifier can be a or a phrase in the sentence so that can modify another noun. Sometimes we place them wrong in the sentence. Consequently, the meaning of the sentence becomes super odd or strange. And just we are identifying it. And number five, Nawaf, the beagle chased the cat, parking and howling. Yes, teacher. The, yes? the word we circle is uh, chased. Yes. And we underline barking and howling. Bravo, bravo, bravo. We underline barking and howling, which is a participle phrase or a participle clause. But here, who was barking and howling? The cat, teacher. No, not the cat. In this decision uh, right now? Chased. Yes, okay. That's great. You choose the chase. Okay. But here, who was barking and howling? The cat was barking and howling, or the beagle was barking and howling? I think the cat. No, if it's the cat, then the place here is correct. If it's the cat, 
then it's at least here this phrase here parking and howling then it's correct because it's directly right now next to the word it modifies which is the cat but unfortunately the cat wasn't parking and howling the cat was running and the beagle was parking and howling after the cat so here parking and howling modifies the beak like the dog remove the beagle okay the dog it chased the cat parking and howling so here the dog the beagle it was parking and howling after the cat but the cat was just running the cat doesn't park the cat meows okay now up so here okay. we are identifying a noun so that act is like an adjective and number six Saad Saeed al do you have a mic? Musad, I didn't hear you all day. Yeah. Yeah, number six, please. Uh, Sid placed the ketchup bottle on the table that was dripping. Yep. Uh, we underline that was dripping. Bravo. And we circled uh, ketchup. Catch a what? Bottle. Yep. So in this case, you have uh, Sip placed the ketchup bottle on the table. Correctly. That was dripping. So the table was dripping or the ketchup bottle was dripping. So the bottle was dripping, not the table. Very good, Musa. Bravo, bravo, bravo. Who else didn't answer? Mr. Man, let me in, please. Can you confirm that you understand the lesson? Hi, answering number seven. Um, just what page are you guys on? Thirty-eight. Yep. Okay, I'm just taking What? I'm sorry, Salim, but your voice is super lagging. Okay, this is I shall. I shall read the number seven or eight. Seven? I thought. What? I thought of the graph of the eight house across okay. the street. I took a photograph of a house across the street shaped like a hexagon. What act is as a modifier in this sentence? I think it's uh, shaped like a hexagon. Bravo. Shaped like a hexagon. And it's called the participle clause, by the way. This is called the participle clause or participle phrase. So what looks like or what shapes like a hexagon? The street. What? Ah, oh, no, the house. The house shaped like a hexagon. So here we have this close here. The participle one should be directly after the house. So supposedly your sentence must be: I took a photograph of a house shaped like a hexagon across the street. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Fahd, you didn't answer today. Number eight. Fahd, did you have a mic? All right, Walid. Number eight. Chasing rabbits on the road, Luke was afraid a car might hit the dog. Um, so chasing rabbits on the road is the uh, is the adjective, and I think it refers to dog. Bravo, 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 bravo. So in this case, we have a chasing rabbits on the road. Luke was afraid the car might hit the dog. In this position, guys, now chasing the rabbits on the road, and directly we followed it by Luke. In this case, we are describing Luke as chasing the rabbits on the road and of course that's incorrect yet on the other hand chasing the rabbits on the road modifies the dog 
the dog was chasing the rabbits and the dog circled. So supposedly your sentence must be Luke was afraid a car might hit the dog chasing the rabbits on the road. Nice one, very, very good. And number 10, uh, Yad. Ahmed Wait, what about nine? Ahmed, did you answer? I think Fahad doesn't have a mic. And I think Ahmed is sleeping. Okay, yet. Number 10, after working on his car, I was covered with grease. Uh, you know, uh, after working, maybe like, the grease and the house. Because the house became greasy. Nice, 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 nice. I think that is correct. Thank you. So, what shall I underline? Underline? What is the underline? Uh... So, oh, no. Covered with grease and Calvin. What? Covered with grease and Calvin. Covered with uh, grace and Calvin. Calvin, bravo, 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 bravo. That's a very, very tricky one. On this case, I have after working on his car, I have covered with grace. So the first one here, after working on his car, it's correct. It's a place is correct. Why it's correct? Because who was working on his car? Calvin was so I just followed that uh, subordinate clause directly with the noun it refers that's why it's correct on the other hand I have covered with grace a participle clause this participle clause it doesn't refer to the house the house was not covered with grace yet on the other hand Calvin was so I must say after working on his car Calvin covered with grace came into the house following me so far I mean, there is two answer correct no 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 i have two phrases act as like an adjective i have the first one after working on his car the second one covered with grease both of them act as like an adjective in order to know which one is correct and which one is misplaced the first one after working on his car describes whom who was working on the car calvin calvin this is correct because calvin came directly after it so it's a correct so i underline that so after working both. On teacher, what happens now? teacher i underline both no 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 underline only covered with grace come on guys i'm explaining to you question, what about question nine yeah, what, what question? Really? We didn't solve it? Oh, my, my bad. Sandy yeah. cooked oatmeal in the microwave flavored with the cinnamon. Favorite. Sandy cooked oatmeal in the microwave flavored with cinnamon. So we have here flavored with cinnamon. It does not describe the microwave. But on the other hand, describes what the oatmeal. So supposedly the sentence will be Sandy cooked the oatmeal flavored with the cinnamon in the microwave. So simply, when you have subordinate clause, when you have a propositional phrase, when you have a participle clause, a participle clause it starts with a participle present or past participle. Participle present. Starts with ing, like number two, eating lunch, or past participle, like covered with grease, or number nine, flavored with cinnamon. All of these clauses and phrases can act like an adjective or an adverb. If they act like an adjective, then they describe a noun. If they act like an adverb, they can describe a verb, an adjective, or another adverb. And in order to remove ambiguity or oddness from your sentence, just place the modifiers directly after the noun they refer to. So in number one, the librarian gave a book to Dennis. 
with a torn cover. So the propositional phrase with a torn cover shall be put directly after the book. The librarian gave a book with a torn cover to dance and to the rest of all of these sentences. So far, so good. Yes. Really? Any question? Teacher, yes. I don't understand nine. Number nine. Okay. Yeah. Sand cooked oatmeal in the microwave. Flavored with cinnamon. So, what is the symbol sentence here? Give me the symbol sentence. Sand the main clothes. Clothes. No. Give me the main clothes. The main clothes. Hmm? I'm cooked oatmeal. Yeah. That's it. Sandy. Cogged oatmeal. That's my main clothes, right? Subject, yeah. verb, and object. What else do you have in this sentence? What? What else do you have in this sentence? About in the main clothes. A modifier. In the microwave. In the microwave. Propositional phrase. And I have flavored with cinnamon. Flavored with cinnamon called a participle phrase. Okay? So, so you underline flavored the with cinnamon. cinnamon. Flavored with cinnamon came directly after the noun. What? Microwave. Does flavored with cinnamon describes the microwave? No, it, it describes oh, it's a oatmeal. It describes oatmeal. Yeah, it describes oatmeal. So I must bring them directly after what? The oatmeal. Yeah. So when now you have you underline flavored with cinnamon and you like circle. Circle out. So when you have a participle phrase or a participle clause came after a noun, but it doesn't describe that noun, then it's called misplaced. Misplaced. That's the meaning of a misplaced modifier. So when you have a phrase or a clause in a sentence describes another word or another Thing in that so here, it, Michael, so that the here directly is... next to it, then it's misplaced. And all we need to do is to identify it so that we can arrange it in practice B. In practice B, you will do what the same thing modify, but in this case, you will remove it. So you will say that Sandy cooked the oatmeal flavored with cinnamon with the cinnamon in the microwave. Okay, like for example, here, nine board, is just over long. running across the field. Of course, running across the field describes the horse. Doesn't describe the fence. The fence does not run. So the horse running across the field jumped over the fence. Got it? What was the answer? Got it, Salim. Do you so the answer is uh, flavored with cinnamon, and you underline oatmeal. I mean, you circle oatmeal and underline flavor okay. with okay. cinnamon. Yeah. Oh, Hello. 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 I can't hear anyone. Hello. But you can hear me though, right? Hello, uh, right? I mean, the class ended anyway, so can't I Hello? leave too? Hi, yes, teacher. Yes, now I can hear you. Yeah, all right, the period finished. Yes, yes unfortunately, the period did finish. So, unfortunately. any questions so far? No, thank you. Okay, do practice B and homework. I finished it. Okay, that's good. Yes, I lead my best with it. <laughs> Don't cheat, huh? Don't give them your answers. No, it's not cheating, it's sharing. Sharing, yes. sharing. sharing. yeah. Yes. Their knowledge during the session. What? That's sharing. We, 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 no, 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 we, we share knowledge, intelligence. Yeah, knowledge, I know that it's my. <laughs> All right, see you next session, boys. Yes, bye. Yes. Uh, goodbye. Yeah, I'll lie you there. I'm here.